thank you. Thank you for joining us in worship, for bringing yourself here to offer gratitude, to offer longing to God and to each other. If you ski, hike, or you just like to cuddle up when it's cold, welcome to you. If you have house plants, plastic or real, welcome. If you're energized or if you're really, really tired, welcome to you. If you're in recovery, welcome. As we enter into a space for contemplation and for reflection, let us know with our bodies and with our minds that no matter where we are physically, God is surely with us. Let's listen for God's still speaking voice in our introit. Please join me in the call to worship printed in your bulletin. God, we come before you. Let our worship be humble and bold. We have stumbled away from our faith walk. May we find the comfort of your call. Gracious one, your voice provides peace which compels us to move for the justice we read about in your gospel. We know we are sometimes prone to selfish ways, and so we seek God's grace. In joy or pain, the rich depth of the gospel is promised to us, God's children. Let our prayers be heard by the angels, saints, and by our Savior. Please join us in hymn number 517, I Need You Every Hour.
we'd like to invite you to greet one another with signs of God's peace this morning. If you're here in church and you want the more, I guess, COVID-friendly way of greeting each other, we're just doing elbow bumps. If you don't want people to approach you, you can use a peace sign, and that tells people, this is my bubble, and peace be with you. So please greet one another with signs of God's peace. invite folks to slowly make your way back to your seats. No need to rush or um, stumble over. Slowly back to your seats. If you're at home and you're joining us on worship, we want to make sure you, you know that you can also get involved in greeting each other with signs of God's peace. If you're at home, you can send a peace note. You can send a text message or write a physical note. If you write a physical note, make sure you think about how you will get that note to someone else. You could put it in a mailbox or on someone's screen door or under their windshield wiper at the store. So if you want to know what to write, peace be with you will work just fine. We invite you to join us in the order of service. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Please join me in the unison gathering prayer printed in your bulletin. Loving creator, in simple handshakes and greetings, we find a deep sense of your hope and peace. Let us be assured of the Holy Spirit this hour. Let our voices find strength as they are raised to you in unity. We pray that your scripture will fill us with a call too deep to ignore. Let us recenter around the passion of the gospel so that we might move like a strong breeze from a valley and mighty wave from an ocean. Let our worship of you be authentic and humble. We pray all this for love's sake and in Jesus' name. We invite you to join us in moments of confession. Gracious God, we come before your realm of grace to repent of the ways that we have knowingly and unknowingly faltered. We've been selfish instead of generous. We've been proud instead of humble. And we've held grudges instead of forgiving. We need more of you, more of love, and less of ourselves. Gracious one, we humbly ask for your forgiveness. Let us receive it with peaceful and joyful hearts. Renew our minds that we may discern what is good. Fill us with your spirit so that we may be your witnesses in the world. Comfort our hearts that we may know that we have complete redemption by your grace. Hear us in silence, God. Amen. Savior, who has come to be with us as we turn our selfishness over to you, let us find freedom in your grace. Let us find ourselves on your path of righteousness. Let us find ourselves as the ones who are of peace, of prayer, and of great faith. 
You have come for us in our time of need. Let us feel your presence as we sing. Could I get some younger friends to come up here? Are, they, are people willing? Yay! Always nice when y'all are willing to come up front. Super. Wow, we've got a little crowd here. This is great. We're crowding here. Oh my gosh. I don't know if we need this extra. I, don't, I think I'm going to leave this microphone over here. If we need it, we can always use it. So. One warning for this children's message, actually there's two warnings. One warning is that it's a, it's a little bit of a repeat, so in a way it's kind of like a quiz or a test because you should know the punchline or the end of it, okay? So if you're older, you probably know what a pop quiz is, but don't worry, there's no grades here, okay? And then the second part is that it gets a little sad at the end. All right, so I've warned you. Is that okay? You guys can handle it. Sometimes life is sad, you know? If you can't talk about it at church, where can you talk about it at? Okay, do you remember Lester? Great, you don't remember. Well, I don't know, that's good and bad, but let's see, maybe next time you'll remember Lester. All right, this is called Lester. Lester was given a, a magic wish by the goblin who lives in the banyan tree. And with his wish, he wished for two more wishes. So now, instead of just one wish, he cleverly had three. And with each one of these, he simply wished for three more wishes, which gave him three old wishes plus nine new. And with each of these, 12, he slyly wished for three more wishes, which added up to 46. Or is that 52? Well, anyway, he used each wish to wish for wishes till he had 5 billion, 7 million, 18,034. And then he spread them on the ground, and he clapped his hands. And he danced around, and he skipped, and he sang. And then he sat down, and he wished for more. And more, and more. They multiplied while other people smiled and cried and loved, and reached, and touched, and felt. La Lester sat amid his wealth, his wishes, stacked mountain high like stacks of gold, sat and counted, and grew old. And then one Thursday night, they found him dead with his wishes piled all around him. And they counted the lot and found that not a single one was missing. All shiny and new. Here, take a few. And think of Lester as you do. In a world of apples and kisses and shoes, Lester wasted his wishes on wishing. Oh, that was a big sigh, Lorelei. What do you think about this fella named Lester? Anybody have any thoughts? No, he's 
gets a little, it's a little sad there at the end, doesn't it? You don't think it's, I think it's kind of sad. You know, he had all these wishes. But what did he do? He just died because what did he wish for? Nothing. Nothing, really. Well, he had wished for more wishes. But in the end, he basically didn't have anything, did he? And did you hear what other people had who didn't have all the wishes? They had touches. Maybe that's like hugs. And it said they felt. So maybe they, maybe that meant, you know, they they felt what it was like to be happy or to be sad. Or maybe they felt excitement for a new animal. Or maybe they felt uh, fear. Right? But Lester, he was just sort of sitting there. So there's a scripture that we're going to read. Good question. What? Say it again, Mary. Oh, well, that's part of science, but that's a question for a different day. Maris's question was, why did he decompose? Which is a good question. It's a good question, but it's a different children's message, and I can't keep everybody here that long. But good question. So there's a scripture this morning, and it says, we cannot serve, we cannot serve God and wealth. So what we have to ask ourselves as young people reading this poem named Lester is, what do we do with our wishes? You know, if we were given three wishes, what would we do? Or if we were given $10, what would we do? And when we're in church, we say, what would God have us do? So that's, that's what we're going to... Yeah. So, so part of what we do with our $10 is we ask, how can we love God with our $10? That's good. Planting trees. This is a good one because because it's part of God's creation. You know, and actually planting things is expensive. It can be. So you have to have a little bit of money. So you have to use your ten dollars to do that. You, yep, seeds can be expensive. So we're gonna pray, and I want you to always remember that when you're given something, whether it's wishes or ten dollars or whatever it is, you gotta think. How can this be a part of God's kingdom? How can this be a part of God's realm? What, what we can, how can we be a part of God's realm? Okay. So I invite you to pray with me. If you want to, you can repeat what I say. So I say, dear God, thank you for wishes and dreams and all that we are given. Let us be thankful And learn how to follow you. Amen. Okay, so we're going to sing for you while you go to church school. Thank you for listening. A reading from the Hebrew Bible, commonly referred to as the Old Testament, from the book of Amos, chapter 8, verses 4 through 7. Hear this, you that trample on the needy, and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, When will the new moon be over that we may sell grain? And the Sabbath, so that we may offer wheat for sale. We will make the ephah small and the shekel great and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver 
and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. The gospel lesson this morning is according to Luke chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. Then Jesus said to the disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, what is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, what will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, how much do you owe my master? He answered, a hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 50. Then he asked another, how much do you owe? He replied, a hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and make it 80. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. And whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you with the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Great Redeemer, may your glory reign in our reflections. We pray that the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable to you, for you are our rock. Move in the space between words and hearing, and we will move with peace, prayer, and faith. I could go on and on with theological reflection about this Lester from Shel Silverstein. Did y'all remember that I had read it before? The kids didn't. So, I mean, I have to make sure I critique myself appropriately. My children's messages need to be a little more memorable, I guess. Boy, this Lester. Lester's out for personal gain, you know? That's, that's what he's getting towards. We hear about the same thing in the gospel. We really need to look at the scripture reading as an invitation into the gospel rather than a call out about how we've lived so far. Sure, the text can be heard or read as a great condemnation, and maybe it is for some of us. But I think the effect of this scripture is to be action for our lives not to lead us towards guilt or shame, to invite us into reflection. I think from this place we'll be more motivated to move with the gospel. We might try to center ourselves on what we could and what we should become. For this Just Peace Sunday, our national church has invited us to consider prayerful living. 
What do prayer and just peace have to do with this gospel word? Well, it's a lot. The scripture says, whoever is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. Whoever is faithful in very little is also faithful in much. Prayer and peace? When we read the scripture, we might find ourselves asking, Ooh, am I faithful or am I dishonest? Oh no, that's right. God knows about that one time I told that fib that ended up wrecking an entire relationship. Or, oh no, God knows that I struggle with truth in general. Or, oh no, I am hyperbolic all the time. Does that mean I'm dishonest in little, which means I'm dishonest in much? We are all invited to be the faithful. From my understanding of this text and the broader picture here, if we're asking these specific questions about fibs, about lies, about how sometimes we're prone to dishonesty, then we're thinking about this text in the wrong way. Jesus is getting at a bigger picture in the gospel here. The deep call to love. Jesus is pointing towards larger theological issues that have implications for our finances. I don't know if y'all noticed, but I end up talking about that a lot. And if you didn't also notice, I follow the lectionary, which means the worldwide church wants us to think about how we use our resources. It's really important. But the implications go beyond just our finances. Exactly what, again, do prayer and just peace have to do with this gospel word? The historical notes from our national church's 15th synod, or the national gathering, remind us that a just peace is grounded in God's activity in creation. And creation shows us the desire of God to sustain the world and not destroy it. Just peace is grounded in covenant relationship. God creates and calls us into covenant. In short, God chooses to be in relationship with us. Even those of us, all of us, sometimes we are dishonest. And so we turn to God, right? That's what we do. We repent. And we remember that this covenant goes beyond the things that are wrong in our lives. These historic writings from our national church show us that the world around us is an indication that God cares for us. Children who are very, very young, knowing that planting a seed, planting a tree, is caring for the covenant. That's what Lorelei and Maris said. They said, in this small action, God will exist Humanity will be served, and God will co-create with us as people of the gospel. What does prayer have to do with this? Prayer is one of the key ways that we, we relate to God. It's why I in, do my best to invite the kids to learn simple prayers. When we turn to God in prayer, we can more ably find the ways that each of us is particularly called to live into the just peace of our larger community, of our local church, of our national church. Being prayerful and seeking just peace are indeed actions of loyalty and steadfast covenant life, rather than the opposite of what the gospel shows us, dishonest and selfish ways. What we read about in the gospel text is a person who is less than honest. In this key scripture, whoever is dishonest in very little is also dishonest in much. Let's be real. It gets confusing, this text, this parable. The same theologian I mentioned last week, last week, Helen Montgomery de Beauvoir, she explains why this is so confusing. She writes, the parable presents as the model of our faith someone whose life is completely the opposite of everything that Christ taught. Jesus weaves in a story in which the main character is a shyster, a lazy, conniving, self-centered manager 
of someone else's treasure. He's out for personal gain to save his own skin. Out for personal gain. The opposite of what the covenant is calling us towards. First, we need to realize that in many ways, we too are out for personal gain. We've all been dishonest. It's part of being human. Sometimes we falter, right? And maybe some of us falter a lot. It just depends on who we are in our journey. It might be of some or maybe little comfort to know that part of the reason this is the case is scientific. An article from the University of Chicago in 2020 discusses the science and the neurology of this. A man named Jack Wang of the University of Chicago News wrote about this neurology and this research. They found that multiple cortec cortical, so in your brain, these networks, cortical networks, brain networks, are dedicated to processing decisions that benefit the self. And self-interest that dominates early stages of decision making. Moreover, fairness for self and fairness for others had non-overlapping patterns of neural activation. In other words, part of the way we act out of self-interest is beyond our minds. It's a part of our survival. We have to be aware of it, right? In other words, we have to respect science, something Maris has probably learned about here and other places, right? Science matters. We are predisposed to look at situations from self-interested perspectives. So this relates to our call to be in covenant with other people. If we can be more aware of this, then I believe we will more ably walk with the gospel call to love people well, to care for the poor, to uplift those who are in need, to see that if we are serving God, we cannot serve wealth. The secondary part of what Wang has written here about our neurons in our brain shows us that we do not even think of what is right for ourselves as being what is right for others. So in a way, the science is showing us that empathy is very, very difficult. Our brains tell us that we deserve more than other people deserve. It's critical for us to keep this in mind when we're considering a gospel call that says we should care for those who are needy, those who are vulnerable, not just once, but time and time again. The first hymn this morning has called and invited us out of selfishness. I need you every hour, acknowledging that we do not simply exist on our own, but that a great spirit is calling us to more than what is simply with us, in the ways that we want to act on our selfish desires. God is calling us to a larger picture. This hymn is a prayer for peace. It can move in our hearts, in our bodies, in our souls. And we can take this beyond ourselves and beyond our church walls, our buildings, and even beyond Plymouth. Rather than being caught in a shame cycle and feeling caught out by the gospel and worrying about the times in our lives that we've fibbed, or we've told a lie, or we've messed something up really, really bad. We can find ourselves of, as invited into this covenant of just peace, of prayerful living. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful in much. So how have you been faithful? No, really. How have you been faithful? Let me help you. Well, today you showed up at church. That's pretty good. Or you tuned in. That counts too. You have trusted people to be with you in community. Simply daring to be present. The, it seems like the farther we go into human history, being present becomes more and more of a challenge for us. And so you did that. It counts. At least five of you have pledged to care for children in need of food outside of our church walls. I think it's probably more like 10 or 15 people. At least seven of you have continually asked questions about 
how our community can join the effort to address racist policies and practices in our church, our nation, our state, and in our community. At least 45 family units or individuals here have made faithful financial commitments to our church, which goes beyond the church walls. At least 12 of you have faithfully committed to bringing excellent music to our community, not just by showing up on Sunday morning, but by practicing as much as they're able on Thursday nights. Whoever is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much. The parable, de Beauvoir says, the parable of the manager speaks to the Christians or the communities have lost the vision of the larger picture. Who are the people of God? What have they been called to? You all have been asking yourselves these questions. But we have to know that the journey doesn't start and begin with deciding to go to church or start and begin with joining choir or start and begin with feeding children in Plymouth. The journey continues today and throughout our lives. Yes, we need to be aware of our propensity to be and to behave selfishly. It is really important. But we also need to remember that we are indeed faithful. The gospel is an invitation to be and to become loyal and steadfast. As we walk with just peace and as we move our very best with prayerful living, let us remember that this is our call and let us show this call in our words and actions. Be one of peace, of prayer, of faith. Be faithful in a little and you will find yourself to be faithful in a lot. We invite you to rise as you're able and led for hymn number 102, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. We'd like to invite you to join us in a time of prayer. If you're at home on Facebook, you're more than welcome to note um, folks in the comments on Facebook, but we always just want to make sure you're aware that it is a very public space, so if it's personal, we might suggest just being cautious with what you put on Facebook. You can always email us at office at uccplymouth.org to get us 
prayer concerns or joys, and we're happy to list them. If you have a bulletin or if you're looking at the bulletin online, there's a list of folks, and we always want to encourage people to look at the list. If you have a prayer practice at home, do your best to incorporate um, folks into your daily prayer. It's really appreciated. I wonder if anyone has a prayer they'd like to bring before the congregation. Yes, Jen. Um, I, we have a new pet in my home. It is very exciting. His name is Benjamin. He's a little cat, so it's very exciting. Oh, God, in your grace and mercy, hear your people at prayer. Thank you, Jim. All right, so let's turn to God in prayer. Um, oh, did someone mention something? I thought I... Oh, okay. We're good? Okay. Oh, Alice, okay. Yeah, I, I will mention, um, Lord, the house was burned down in the oh, morning yes. um, last week, and the family lost everything, Right. Uh, and we see we had uh, eight adult children, shepherds, and four puppies that were in a small child that threw up on us. So if we could keep that family, I, I just like to pray over them that I can remember them for a little bit. Becky? So um, Becky is a woman living in Rumney who um, her whole home was destroyed by a fire. I think all the people survived. All the people survived, but there were a lot of pets that passed away um, as a result of the fire. So we're thinking of Becky. And actually, I don't know if anybody happens to know if they are in need. Um, just let uh, maybe let me know. and That might be helpful, yeah. Um, so it's Becky and everyone in that family. Oh, God, in your grace and mercy. Hear your people at prayer. Yes. Yeah. 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 Big uh, gratitude to Ashley for um, taking leadership this morning. And we're praying, David, I don't know if you're watching, but we're praying for you, and we have been. So um, thank you, Ashley, and we're praying for you, David. Oh, God, in your grace and mercy. Hear your people at prayer. Well, um, before we move into silence, I just want to mention that a tiny bit of our prayer will be um, adapted from an author named Robert Benson. So I'd like to invite you all to join me in silence. O oh, Holy One, we give you thanks for all your gifts and graces this day, for the splendor of the whole of creation and for the beauty of the world. We turn to you in gratitude for the wonder of life and for the mystery of love, for the blessings of family and friends and the loving care that surrounds us. God, in many ways, it's easier to be selfish and dishonest. In many ways, we are encouraged to disregard so many other people. And today, we come here longing to be faithful to the gospel call. Wonderful counselor, let us turn to you every hour and prayer and pray every day and become more steadfast and loyal. God, we are so grateful for the young people in our church. Let us always remind them that their new ideas are welcome as they grow. We're especially happy for those in our church community who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. God, we have many sources for joy, though we always also have anxieties and fears. God, we're praying for an end to gun violence. Let us use our vote and our means that we have to make change in our country. We're continuing to pray for people in war-torn areas. We're praying for all individuals and families touched by addiction. Oh, holy God, bless those who are touched by mental illness and bless those who care for them. Let us find ourselves in solidarity with those who feel lonely and isolated. We pray for those who are mourning in any way. God, guide us all so that we may be the hands and feet of love, pursuing justice for the poor and upholding the cause of the needy. 
We pray for public servants, and we pray for an end to racist policies. God, we're praying for service industry folks, especially those who are living in the lakes region of New Hampshire. This is a busy time of year, and many of them are tired, and they're bracing for a season of change and excitement. God, grant them peace. As the seasons move with the rushes of mighty Pentecostal winds, let us hold each other with care, including strangers, for we are all God's children. God, we're praying for rain and roll in New Hampshire. And more importantly, we're praying for a broader consensus that the urgency to care for your earth will come about. God, let us continue to see ways that we can act. We're praying for people who struggle to access the full range of reproductive health care, and we're praying for human rights and health care across the globe, that people may take care of themselves and their families. We pray for leaders in this church and in this world. We're praying for our conference ministers and all who are serving. We're praying for our partner church in Mas Vingo, Zimbabwe. God, let our living be prayerful indeed, and let us walk towards and with the just peace to which we have been called. Let us find ourselves as faithful in much. Let us always recall your words as you said, be watchful then and strengthen the things that remain. So Holy One, let us know that we are hidden by your great shadow and give us charge on this very day. So God, hear us, your people, as we dare to utter the words that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today, we can give, remembering that we are indeed faithful people. We have showed up this morning, and now we are invited to give. In our giving, let us be prayerful, steadfast, and loyal. If you are at home and you want to learn more about giving, you can go to uccplymouth.org forward slash give. If you're sending a check, just make sure you send it to post office box 86 rather than our physical address. And if you're in church and you're not contributing, you can always extend your hand simply towards the plate and think about the thing which you will give the world this week. Perhaps you'll call someone who you know needs a call. Our gospel is inviting us to honor God rather than wealth. I pray that it will be so for us during this time. We invite you to join us this morning.
Please join me in the offertory prayer. Holy One, graciously accept our gifts that love will flow abundantly. Beyond our church building, let our step, our words, and our hearts bring your peace to all in need. Let us remember that even with the mistakes of our lives, we are called to work to repair the world. Let us know that we are not called to perfection, but we are called to move towards the perfection of God's grace. Multiply our gifts, we pray. Let these humble offerings reach those most in need, those who live outside, who are seeking food, those who are lonely. We pray all this for love's sake. Closing him is number 403, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Go today knowing that you are, you are called to be the faithful. Know that your call is one for simple and prayerful just peace. Being kind to strangers and sharing of what you have. So as you go, tend the sick, 
share a meal, even if from afar or over the phone. If people ask you where you've come from, say to them that you're God's child and that you have seen love in Christ. Please be seated. I wanted to remind folks that we'll have a short dedication of the, or rededication of the Peace Bowl if you want to join out front. <laughs> <laughs> 